All right, it is about 2.03. Thank you guys for attending the American Public Health Association's third webinar that we have today. Um, and we will be covering how to create an abstract. Also, I do wanna say that if there are any comments that are filtering as I discuss, please feel free to drop them in the chat. We have plenty of facilitators on board ready to highlight those questions for you all. But this is gonna be a very engaging session. So I'm really looking forward to having some time spent with you all today. And so today's agenda is very robust. So put your seatbelts on, we have a lot to cover. Um, today, we're gonna be going through a couple of frequently asked questions that you all have been throwing in the registration links as you all have been registering for these webinars. So thank you so much. We have accumulated those questions and we'll be able to answer a lot of those on our frequently asked questions page. We also will be talking about a couple of host site projects from previous AmeriCorps members. Um, and then really having an engaging discussion on potential topics that you all might have in your host site experiences. Um, we also will be breaking down what an abstract actually is, its components, and how we can submit abstracts for the scholarship in our um, potential engagement in the annual meeting this November as well as what our submission process is and a couple of sample abstract topics from our previous annual meeting in 2022. We will have an activity that will engage in pulling apart an abstract and we all collaboratively putting it back together. So that will be really exciting. And then a couple of reminders that we'll have toward the end as well as next steps. I would like to first introduce uh, myself, Christy Sproul. I am a consultant with the American Public Health Association working on the AmeriCorps work that you all are engaging with me today. And we also have Munira, and I'll allow her to introduce herself. Hi all, I'm Munira Hassan. I am a program manager with Public Health AmeriCorps. Uh, you are probably tired of seeing my face, so. <laughs> But it's always nice to to get to see our members, um, and I'm excited to learn along with y'all uh, with Christine APJ and hopefully share some insight that'll be helpful for you uh, during this application process. Thanks so much, Manir. So the annual meeting in our first two webinars, we have discussed the annual meeting quite a bit but we do encourage all of you to attend. And by attending, we also encourage you all to apply for the scholarship that we will be releasing next week, potentially um, to have you all be able to engage in writing an abstract and talking about a potential topic of choice that you are now doing in your host sites. So as we've had in the last webinar, we had Chris, who is our APHA president, hype up the whole experience for us and give us a really, a, a really great way of understanding what the conference entails. But just as a quick review, um, the annual meeting will be in November. It is a, um, it's a conference to really come together public health professionals from all walks of life and really understand what kind of scientific strategies have been accumulating for the past um, year. So since the annual meeting, every year there's new um, opportunities for public health professionals to talk about their research, talk about their programmatic experiences across the nation, and also talk about what equitable changes they have been making both locally, tribally, statewide and nationally. So it's a really great way to connect, engage, and have a lot of fun. And we'll talk about what that looks like for you all to attend the conference as well. And like I said, please feel free in the time being to throw things in the chat as I discuss. We will be able to have some time at the end to have any type of Q&A sessions. And so there was a lot of questions around the annual meeting, what the process looks like and how to actually um, complete the scholarship application. So thank you all for the questions and keep them coming. Um, we will have a due date of June 9th for the scholarships and um, we will be reviewing them in that month span by um, a board that we have chosen through APHA 
And through that board, they will review the applications, look them through, and then be able to award applicants toward the end of June. And so that scholarship that will be awarded to the selected um, scholars will cover the attendance of the conference and also traveling to and from the conference, okay? Also, considering what application details are around this application, um, we really want to know who are you and what project are you doing um, and what is your host site, what's your project abstract, and why are you interested in attending the conference? You could be anywhere in the world come November, but we want to know why specifically um, during the annual meeting you have interest. And then what do you want to learn and gain from those experiences? Um, we really want to understand from you why the conference is so important to your professional growth and why it is relevant to the AmeriCorps experiences that you have had throughout your whole site experience. Um, as you learn more about the application process and are attending the webinars, you will be more um, acclimated to what we expect. But for now, we will definitely have a really good layout today in today's webinar on what the abstract process looks like for all of you and how we can provide the technical support to make sure that you all have the efficiency of moving along. I will now turn it to Minira to give us a couple of examples. Hi again, thank you so much, Christy. I always get so hyped when I'm on these calls because I'm like, oh, they're getting a scholarship to go to UBJ. This is so exciting. Ooh, they're also getting an opportunity to have a poster. So these are two really cool opportunities in one that UBJ is providing. And I hope they all are as excited as I am and are looking to take advantage of it. So um, I'm here just to review a little bit of the last call. Um, so we had a homework assignment, right, to think about your projects and decide what you wanted to write about. Um, as a quick kind of overview, we suggested that you think about your activities, the audience, the impact, and potential lessons learned, um, obviously with the caveat that some of y'all may have just started and we know that your projects are ongoing, but that is totally fine. Um, and I wanted to, as Christy mentioned, just kind of pull some examples from some of the things that your fellow Public Health AmeriCorps members are doing. Um, so folks are working on preventing childhood obesity through school-based nutrition and physical activity interventions. Um, they might be exploring, exploring the role of community health workers in hospital-based epilepsy care. Uh, so I wanted to, to see if we had a brave volunteer or two that might be willing to share you know, if, if they were able to think about the homework assignment and might be willing to share what they're thinking about writing their abstract on. Um, so I'm gonna open up the floor if anyone wants to, to unmute themselves. I could do, I could pick somebody, but I'm gonna, ah, do we have um, volunteer? I'm thinking about doing, um, racial justice as community health, because um, my host site does a racial justice workshop in the winter time. So I was thinking about doing a project on that. Hi, Grace. Thank you so much for sharing. That is very exciting. I know I would definitely want to read your poster. Would you mind just giving us a little bit of an uh, context as to where you're placed and what generally you're working on? Yeah, I'm in the Green Bay, Wisconsin area at, it's called the Cassandra Voss Center on the St. Norbert College campus. So we do programming for the greater Green Bay community as well as our students on campus. Excellent, thank you so much. Do we have maybe one more volunteer? I see something in the chat, I will read it out. Uh, so Taylor is working on programming around land-based healing and indigenous values in public health in Northwest Minnesota with Pope County Public Health. Very exciting. Um, I told y'all I was in a public health training program and I was out in Minnesota. So I just get very excited <laughs> when people are doing public health in Minnesota and everywhere, of course. Um, okay, great. Well, I think that y'all you know, have a great understanding of kind of the, the ask from last week and are in a good place to start thinking about the abstracts. So I'm going to turn it back over to Christy to talk us through how to take all of your amazing work and exciting ideas and articulate an abstract. Thank 
Mira, and thank you again for all that shared. It really does help to have perspective on what you all are doing so that we can better help you all formulate your abstracts. So the question is, what is an abstract, right? We've been wanting you to write one. And so here is the support that is gonna be provided to actually get the job done. Now think of an abstract as a commercial, right? Or a trailer to a movie. Before you watch a movie, you usually want to know a little bit about what you're getting yourself into, right? I know I do, especially when it comes to the Little Mermaid movie that's coming out next Friday. I cannot wait. But in terms of great movies or great context or great content, sometimes people want to get an idea of what you're actually going to be saying or presenting before the actual presentation. And so the abstract is essentially that commercial that you will give to people to help them understand what your topic is, what your introduction is, what kind of work have you done in the project? What have you gained from the project? Are there any results or outcomes from that project? And so the abstract is a snapshot literally of that work that you are gonna be doing throughout your whole site experience with AmeriCorps. And so it's a very concise summary of what you plan to present at the conference. And you all are going to be using posters to articulate your work. But there are other methods of doing abstracts and actually presenting those um, that work through oral presentations or paper um, presentations through scientific papers. And so with your abstracts being poster, when you print out your poster and show all the pictures and all the designs and all the elements of your work, people can look at the poster and read a bit about what you're doing. And you can be able to stand and ask and answer questions if people have them and just be of pride when you um, are able to showcase your abilities and your work through the poster. But the abstract is the first step in, in really the review committee knowing what you're doing, but also the broader world, um, the broader um, conference attendees to know what you're doing as well. And then some of the elements within an abstract, um, and we'll get into different kinds, because there are different kinds of abstracts, but usually with the abstract elements, we're looking at what the actual issue is. So in your host site experiences, for public health, we are always trying to figure out a public health issue, right? And so with that issue, how can we shortly summarize what that issue looks like? How do we address the issue in a very practical way so that if I read it or anybody reads it, even a five-year-old reads it, they can have some understanding, some level of knowledge around what you are implementing in your host site practices. And then the description is very important because we wanna know what the project is all about. Why is it important to the public health field? How is it advancing the public health profession? And so all of those descriptors are gonna be great for people like ourselves as reviewers, but also the conference attendees to know what that process and what that descriptive, um, those descriptive elements look like. And then also with any great project, there's probably gonna be some lessons that we're learning throughout the process. I'm sure you all are learning a lot of things that you're in the process now and actually coming out of the whole site experience. There's gonna be a lot of things that you all have learned in your time being. So writing down some of those lessons is gonna be great for the abstract. And then recommendations. As you are doing the project, as you are working and implementing different programmatic structures in the public health field, we want to know what would you recommend? What would you do differently? What would you keep the same? What kind of things can we see differently in the work that you do? And so some of those recommendations will be great to see in an abstract. And so this example is actually a abstract that I recently submitted to our health system symposium through the Department of Public Health that was in Macon, Georgia. We had a conference last week. And so um, through my work with the American Heart Association, I talked about what I was doing in helping communities and clinics create a linkage to help better provide people with the education to control their hypertension and also have a patient referral process so that when they are going in the hospital, they have an understanding of what to expect while in the hospital system. And so I created about a 250 word abstract 
find a snapshot of my work. Now, mind you, this work has been going on for almost two years. <laughs> it has been going on even before my association with the organization. But this is a great way that people could read within a paragraph what I'm doing, why the work is so meaningful, and what the presentation will highlight. Right. So this is considered more of a program abstract example. So there are different abstract examples, but this one really highlights how programmatically on a local level, or it can be a tribal or state or federal level, what kind of elements within that program or project are being highlighted and then articulating that in a very succinct and precise way. Now, a scientific abstract will have a bit more layers to it because usually you'll find these abstracts in a scientific paper, right? The American Public Health Association, I'm sorry, the American um, Public Health Association has a journal of its own as well. And so when you look at abstracts in these types of journals, you will most likely find an abstract that looks like this. They will have keywords and they'll also have the author as well as the title with the date that they have created the scientific paper. And so in this abstract example, we see that it is also succinct, it was also very concise, but it gives a little more detail to the actual results and outcomes of the project of research that they were conducting. Um, depending on the research project, it could have been a six month project, it could have been a year or longer project, but the way that they describe the project is really based off of the scientific method of looking at a research question and then going into those deliverables and what the outcomes were in their scientific results. So it looks a bit different than the program abstract, but it has the same kind of elements in terms of the descriptors, the keywords, and some of the things that they add into the abstract, which describes the actual issue that they were trying to, um, trying to justify and trying to answer. And I know I am going through this. Maybe it feels like speed of light, even though I try to talk pretty slow, but please, if you have questions, feel free to stop me, throw it in the chat, um, but hopefully it should make a bit more sense as we go through the activity together. And so for your application submission, this is a great example of what we can see in how you submit an abstract. So keep in mind that this is a two-part slide. Um, but the first part here is showing the issues and the actual description. So this specific abstract is covering um, what the workforce transition looked like after COVID, right? So we know COVID really took the world upside down. But what did the workforce had to transition into after, well, even during COVID and even um, now that we're looking post-COVID into our recovery? So the issue was really well thought out and articulated. They described what um, public health graduates that are newly graduated, what they can do in response to the workforce, um, considering that COVID was something that had the world on pause. And then in the description, it talks more about what the burden of COVID-19 looked like and what kind of work was necessary in order to expand contact tracing, expand education, um, dispel myths around COVID. So the description really helps readers understand what is actually going on in the project. And then of course we have lessons learned and recommendations. Personally, my favorite, because this is where I really get to understand from the author being yourselves, what you have learned and what you have experienced and how you would recommend better options, right? So in the lessons learned, it's very well articulated here that they had a way of helping new graduates create their own schedules, even though it's a critical workload in the public health workforce, to have some sense of scheduling and time management in order to maintain flexibility. And then some recommendations is to hire, have higher paid roles and have different experiences within the public health workforce so that new graduates can feel equipped to and challenged to enter the public health workforce with that level of attainment and knowledge. So as you see um, from the abstract example, this is some this is 
what we would like to see and would expect to see in developing an abstract. And even with its breakdown, it's about 250 words. So keeping it short, keeping it sweet is gonna be the key. And also making sure that you are writing elements of your project that will really stand out and really help the reader connect to the work you do. And so specifically with our work, um, 250 words or less is going to be ideal. That's usually the APH, APHA standard. And so we will implement that same standard in the scholarship application. And so the key to an abstract as well is that you're probably going to edit a few times before submission, unless you're a perfect writer. And if so, I'd love to meet you. <laughs> But if you're like me or anyone else that might need a little more work and might need a little more space to grow in that way, um, it's really good to start in Microsoft Word. And sometimes it starts with a word. Maybe you have a project on um, building a farm in the rural community of Georgia. And even if it starts with, I helped a farmer build crops, I helped a farmer harvest food, even if it starts with a small idea, getting it out on paper is going to help those words flow and help that project come to life. And so um, making sure that you can use Microsoft Word as a way to subtract things, add things, and then polish it for the final product is going to be critical. And making sure you have a title that really helps us understand what the project is about and what you are about to convey in the abstract. Um, and I will say action words and learning objectives are helpful because they do give an idea of what the reader or the um, attendees of the conference are actually gonna learn from your project experience. And so these are a couple of examples of the meeting last year at APHA. And these are some sample abstract topics just to get you guys thinking of some of the work that has been done nationally throughout the communities um, that are served. And so, as you can see with these topics, a lot of them vary. They're in different worlds of the public health field, but they all have a key element of helping the reader understand what exactly they're going to get themselves into as they're looking toward their presentation. So the first topic, we look at anxiety and depressive symptoms. The next topic, we look about policies and adolescent mental health. Next topic, we're looking at SNAP, which is the Supplemental Nutrition um, Assistance Program to help people be able to afford healthy food. We look at another topic of extreme heat in US outdoor workers and policy solutions toward that issue, right? And then lastly, we look at some policing and racial equity and health justice issues and how we can use a community-centered lens to approach that. And so all of these topics really help me as a reader to know that there's going to be something that's going to be special about each of these topics pertaining to maybe a program, a policy, or a health equity issue. But those key words, such as, for example, this, the second one has a key word of policies adolescent mental health. So now I'm starting to understand, okay, it's going to be some type of policy recommendation that they might have. Um, for this last one, right, they talk about racial equity and health justice. Those are huge key words that help me as a reader understand that there's going to be a lot of elements of what health equity looks like in the policing and incarceration space. And so those key words that are powerful and dynamic really help the reader understand more about the topic at hand. And I love what Raya said about making people um, interested in attending and grabbing the folks eye. That's really critical to helping people understand why the work is so important in the public health field. And so now we're gonna work together to create an abstract. And mind you, this is gonna be a sample. This is gonna be something we all do together but it can really help us know more about the elements of the abstract, how we can pull it apart and then put it back together as a team. So um, just for some icebreakers, drop a one in the chat if you have already started your abstract process. I'd like to know anybody who has probably started a little bit of this process already. And drop a two in the chat if maybe this activity is gonna be a great 
time for you to get things rolling. So um, I see a lot of ones, which is great. So considering I see a lot of ones, this activity should be very engaging. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put that in the air, okay, as manifestation, that this will be an engaging activity. Um, and I see a couple of twos, so that's perfect. We're going to have a, a very um, even line of people who need that support and people who have got the ball rolling. So in these different sections, you see that we have an introduction, description, lessons learned, recommendations. As I mentioned earlier, these different sections are the Potent, um, the, the practical elements of an abstract that we expect for the scholarship application. So if you all could just drop either a word or a phrase of what your introduction looks like, what descriptors are within your project, what lessons are you learning in your project so far? And then um, based on what you already done in your host site, what would you recommend to others and how they can do the same thing or they can improve on their uh, processes? So with an introduction, you could start with a potential topic title if you like. You can give different words around what your project is about. Um, I'd love to see from you all what kind of things you are engaging in as you're doing your work in AmeriCorps. I see a lot of, a lot of people hovering over the chat. Um, oh, and I'm going to read this one out. This is a great um, topic of using origami to bolster um, social emotional learning and STEM to um, in adolescent girls. So Journey, that is an amazing topic. And I love how you're using SEL for, and STEM together in marriage. That's beautiful. So yes, the sticky notes will be your guide in order to write different topics, or you can do like Sojourney and throw them in the chat. Either way, I'd love to hear what you all are engaging in. And I see another descriptor of a um, social justice workshop for students and faculty on campus. That is incredible. I'm getting ahead of myself because you're still typing, but I love the topic so far. It's really good. And also, Ryan, I believe if there's a way to save this whiteboard. I'd love to keep copies of it and maybe send it out to you guys to have some inspiration as you're writing. Definitely. We have program, programming around land-based healing and indigenous values and public health. Incredible word, incredible word. We also have in the chat, the power of community health for harm reduction, opioid overdose prevention and HIV testing. Incredible stuff, Andrew. Thank you so much for sharing. And as I'm reading out your topics, if you all want to expand through um, coming off mute or in the chat, feel free. I'd love to dive in deeper to your topics and see what actual elements of your abstract you want to create. And I love another topic we have for Promise, researching the importance of data keeping in a clinic. That is so critical to the work. You can't advance the work without data. Data is the key. So I love that. That's really good. I can expand more on my, my sure, uh, title. I'm not really sure about a title yet, but that was kind of the thing I was going for, the power of community health for harm reduction. Um, so for my program that I'm in, I'm in the D.C. area, and we're doing a lot of, uh, when I talk about community health, we do a lot of going into the community to provide care instead of having people come to us mm -hmm. sort of idea. Um, so we do a lot of pop-up HIV testing, uh, it's all free HIV testing, and we have a location that people can come to, but we also do different kind of pop-up stands, uh, in different areas in DC. And then we also, the bigger part of it is we do Narcan distribution, so we're partnered with, um, one of the mayor's campaigns. Uh, called Live Long DC, and we're a partner to receive Narcan and distribute it also for free and provide information and education around opioid overdose prevention, uh, Narcan use, and um, yeah. 
Nice. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. That was really good. And I, and I like the pairing of meeting the people where they're at and providing those resources to the community. Um, because imagine you having some type of either chronic or infectious or substance abuse condition, and you're lost because you don't know where to go or the resources that can be provided for that work. So thank you. The work that you're doing is very important. Yeah, um, of course. Do, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. my, um, I think that's going to be the main, um, I'm I'll try to use abstract vocabulary, the main, um, mm -hmm. We'll say uh, thing learned. I forgot what the okay lessons, uh, lessons learned. learned about there you going go. into the community to provide care instead of telling people to come to you all the time. Of course, kind of thing. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you so much, Andrew and Manir. I see your hand raised. Yeah, Andrew, I love that. Um, and just one thing that I wanted to highlight for everyone um, as you're thinking about the potential lessons learned of your project or recommendations from your project. Andrew mentioned a unique uh, partnership with the mayor's office, right? And I think that that's always a cool opportunity to highlight and say, oh, here are some of the ways that we've been successful. Here are some of the interesting people that we worked with, in addition to, of course, what Andrew's already highlighted, which is the uh, method of delivery. So I think that there are a lot of innovative, interesting things that y'all do that maybe just feels normal because you're doing it every day. But for us um, and for folks who aren't in your field, these are really exciting things. So um, I've said this before and I'll say it again, if you're here, you have, uh, you're doing work that other folks are interested in. I can affirm that for sure. So thank you for sharing, Andrew. And if other folks wanted to share or have, you know, talk about their ideas, get some insight, we're more than happy to do that. Thanks, Munira. And that was really good. I, I usually also like to say that if no one touched the public health space at all, how do I convince them that it's an important field? And so the stories that you tell make that happen. Um, so Journey, your question or comment. Oh yeah, hi. So um, I was wondering if we are lucky enough to earn the honor of going to the conference um, on, on the scholarship, are the purpose is the purpose of these abstracts um, so that we can present some of our findings or our own work at the conference, um, or are we um, would we would we be expected to say do like a booth or or do some sort of like engagement work at the conference, or is this just sort of deciding um, like for for uh, pulling the candidates out? That's a good question, Sojourney. So the point of the abstract is to be able to put the abstract on actual poster. And so the next um, session that we'll have is creating a poster session for those who were awarded the scholarship. Um, and so that abstract will go on the poster and the poster is the whole project in its entirety. So you can have pictures on the poster, you can have more descriptive details of the project. Um, but the idea is the abstract giving the readers a snapshot of what is potentially going to be on the poster. And during the poster session, it's a huge session of posters lined up in rows, literally at the conference. And so people are walking around and they might ask you questions when they read your poster. Um, they might have some tips for you. They might have some experiences, some shared experiences and lived experiences that you also can resonate with. So the poster is just a way for you to stand tall next to your project and um, talk through some of the elements with those who are um, attending the conference and walking by. Awesome. Thank you so much for that answer. That answers yeah. most of my questions. And just uh, to ascertain, this is open to community core members um, as well, correct? Yes, I believe so. Um, so yes. Mm -hmm. So um, Angie also pointed out a really good um, element of the presentation process. So at APHA, Abstract is often in the online program too. So people can decide they want to come see your poster or hear a presentation. And so um, there's a there's a way to look at both of those sides. Any other questions? I really love all of these topics and perspectives. Um, this is wonderful. Um, and so I want to make sure that this is saved and um, you know, captured so that we can 
always have this as a way that we can kind of lean on each other during this process. Um, Amanir? Oh, just, just pop in some details in the chat. You're good. Thank you, though. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. All um, righty, yeah. Actually, I was like, we're good. And I'm going to pop in about another thing. Um, sure. So I think that, Scorny, you bring up uh, kind of thinking ahead, right? Uh, we, the folks who are, are selected, will do some of these similar calls with poster development. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, going to a conference and, and networking and all of that fun stuff. So we will not be <laughs> leaving anyone out to the hang, uh, we will make sure that y'all are, are supported um, throughout this whole process. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Manira. And these ideas are awesome. Um, and also, I think it's good that we um, are able to kind of look at this in the grand scheme, because imagine during the poster presentation, you all can also look at each other's posters upon acceptance and really get an idea of how your host experiences compares to others and how in public health, it's really all about prevention. And so you'll see that, you'll see that as a thread in all of the work that you're doing is really just helping communities become happy and healthier. So, um, I guess since we have a lot of topics here, I do want to, again, say thank you so much you all for giving us some ideas around what you're doing so far. I am so excited when the application releases and just being able to look at a lot of the work you all are doing. But in the meantime, um, this will be able to be saved for you all to keep and just make sure that you lean on each other throughout this process um, because it is a lot of fun to be in AmeriCorps, I'm, I'm sure of it. And so this um, poster presentation session will be able to highlight all of that work. All right, we have Angie. Thanks, y'all. Just um, one point. I know it's hard at this point when you're just starting for some of you all to know, you know, the idea what you were gonna, want to work on as well as lessons learned and recommendations. So I would just say at this point, you can give us where you think you're going. Um, there will be time between, you know, whenever we do this process and when we get closer to the conference where if you need to make updates or if you learn new things, you can add it then. So um, I know it can be a little scary to say, I don't know what I'm going to know in November yet, but um, just enough that we get an idea of kind of that you know how to do the process and um, kind of what you're going to talk about will be helpful. Thanks, Angie. That's great. It's always room for flexibility. All righty. Well, if we are done with the whiteboard exercise, um, we can move forward, I'm going to, and okay, so we have a very vulnerable comment of feeling afraid and scared to do a presentation. And thank you for that, Jamie. Um, I, I do understand that it is a pretty scary thing to talk about what you've done, but think about it as an, ex, um, think about it as an opportunity for you to showcase why you are so passionate about the work as well. Because um, I think that that can really let some butterflies out and be able to not just focus on the project, but focus on your role in that project. Were you able to connect with a community you've never connected to before? Were you able to have conversations that you've never had? Were you able to see changes um, locally or, um, or in the policy realm that, that excited you or made you more passionate about the public health field. I think those elements are really what stands out as well. And so um, if you are applying for the scholarship and you're actually accepted and you have the chance to highlight your experiences in the presentation, we'll also make sure that you're very comfortable um, to talk about some of these things. And Minir? Yeah, um, Jamie, it's so again, great points. I <laughs> that's really similar to you when I was in a, a position like yours. Um, so that is why we're having these calls. We'll do an office hours next week. So y'all can can go back and work on your abstracts and come back and be like, I need help. I don't know what we're doing. And we'll be happy to work on it with y'all. Um, I think that this is uh, like 
collecting your thoughts and articulating your work is really challenging. And it almost feels like it shouldn't be because you do it every day. But if you're struggling with it, just know that this is hard for everybody. Um, and going through this practice is such a good skill, not only for presentations, but being able to talk about your work on your resume or in interviews or those types of things. So this is challenging. We are here to support you. Another thing that I just wanted to highlight here, uh, oh, very sweet, Gordy. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to highlight is um, the different types of presentations at different uh, conferences. So there are posters, which is what y'all will be eligible for, um, where you'll be in a hall and people can walk up to you. And I personally think that's a really good kind of first step into the presentation world. And Angie, Christine, right, you can speak to this probably a little bit better than I can. Versus there are some presentations where you're like sitting there and giving a 20 minute talk. This is not that. This is you're standing in front of your poster. People can come up to you. We can go up to other people. Um, so it's a fun, I think, uh, hopefully a, a lower <laughs> pressure environment to kind of dip your toes into the, the um, conference world. Yes, yes, yes. And thank you, Raya, for showing again um, some of the ways that people present their posters and have a, a time to engage with their sessions and presentations. So as you can see in this photo, we have the presenter that's talking about Hispanic individuals who have learned different culture traits. And we have a person that's asking that author some questions on their presentation. And so Posters are very much more conversational in which it is a, I would say more of a laid back way to engage in what the work has been done at the host site and really give people in a way of learning more about who you are as well. So um, I think you have more time to talk to audience members in poster sessions than you would just in a 20 minute conversation with 10 minutes of Q&A. So that element in, on its own should give kind of more of a, a whole um, holistic way of talking to people about your work. Um, Minir? Hi, sorry, I just wanna highlight a really good question we got in the chat from Omar. Um, they asked if the abstract was open or closed to current work they're doing as an AmeriCorps member. Um, so we are looking for the abstracts to reflect your work uh, as an AmeriCorps member. Um, so a lot of y'all might be uh, coming in from school or from different volunteer or just different public health experiences, um, but we are looking for these posters to reflect your work as a PHA member. Uh, and we're really excited to hear about it. Thanks so much, Veneer. Thanks for um, looking at the chat for different things. Alrighty, so we have a couple more elements of the presentation. I'm just gonna um, quickly share my screen again so we can wrap up together. And so a few things, um, just as reminders, um, we have the application that's due June 9th, as well as um, we have a review committee that is going to look at the abstracts and have an internal rubric in order to essentially grade them. But that grade is just a way of seeing what abstracts are able to articulate the message of what your project deliverables are and what you have been able to learn and recommend through that project. And so June 30th is the aim for when scholarship recipients um, will know uh, that they have been awarded. And then about 20 to 30 people will be accepted for the scholarship. And then once upon acceptance, we will engage with those recipients on next steps and what it looks like for travel and um, making sure that you can attend to and from. Um, just want to make sure we have things in the chat. Um, so the applications, Kadri, that's a good question. You all will re be receiving the application via email upon its live release. And that should be coming up next week. I want to finger, have my fingers crossed on that, that it will be formulated next week for you all to have about a two and a half week window for submission. And so um, once it is released, you will be able to find it on Fern. And um, Raya was able to send um, it in the chat, the link to Fern. So please check it out. It is live. Um, you all can see a bit about um, what the Fern portal is. And it gives you some tips and tricks 
on your experiences as AmeriCorps members, but the application will be released on the FERN site and you all will be notified upon its release. All righty, no trick questions. Yes, Rainier, very good, no trick questions. It really is just a way for us to get to know you better as an applicant and also understand your work and what you have experienced thus far. And so, of course, we have some office hours to really help you all fine tune the work that you have done so far in the abstract process. So look out for that on June 5th. Please register using the QR code, bring any questions that you have. This is gonna be an informal way to really connect with you all and help you through this process and answer any questions, provide technical assistance and support. And even if it's just a topic, we can help you pull apart some things and uh, formulate an abstract in due time. And so um, Ryan was gracious enough to drop the registration link. So thank you so much for that in case the QR code, um, in case you all want to just click so they're using the QR code. Um, and then since we are at the end, I'll use this time for Q&A, but I'll start with Mark's question in the chat. Um, so we have um, a, a scholarship recipient for 360. So um, Raya mentioned that our NATO friends will be able to help. So we'll connect you to our NATO correspondents and they'll be able to help. But thank you so much for that question. Really appreciate that, Mark. And so we have um, about 10 minutes left, Raya. Yeah, that um, Mark, thanks for that question because that brought up a, a question um, that we have received previously um, as well, just about like kind of the logistics of the scholarship. And I know Christy has, has gone over this and we've mentioned this in previous webinars, but um, the scholarship for the 2023 annual meeting in Atlanta um, that we've been discussing today will cover um, all costs associated with the travel and um, and getting to and from the meeting, um, as well as meeting registration, um, which includes obviously hotels, um, travel of any variety, um, ride sharing to and from um, the airport or train station or anything like that, um, as well as um, meals. I think maybe I just mentioned that, but I'll mention it again, food. Um, so yeah, essentially we will be covering all of those costs um, and we, um, we, yeah, we'll be covering those costs up front so that you will not have to pay for travel um, out of your own pocket. Thank you. Thank you for that, Raya. And um, Sajori so mentioned only one scholarship, so there will be about 20 to 30 scholarship awardees, uh, Sajori. So, so there will be hopefully enough room to go around. But thank you for that question. I think that highlights another cool opportunity with this uh, conference is you will have a cohort of people um, in addition to, to us, of course, and the other uh, public health organizations that are excited to meet you at the conference. Um, you will have your peers working through this process with you, putting together a poster, practicing your presentation. So uh, I think that'll be, it'll be a fun opportunity to um, to obviously go and have the professional development, but also to, to kind of go through this as a cohort. So um, yes, more than one. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Ryan. So sorry, on that note too, piggybacking off of what Munira said, I think um, also wanting to mention, I know we've predominantly focused on the um, application and poster sessions and abstracts for those poster sessions, but also there's going to be a lot of other wonderful stuff um, programming wise that we're going to be doing at the annual meeting beyond just the poster sessions. Um, so Munira alluded to this, but we'll, you know, obviously we'll have plenty of time for you all to, to connect our scholarship recipients. Um, hoping that all of you make it um, to the annual meeting with us, but we will have a number of different kind of like um, wayfinding sessions where we'll introduce the meeting. Um, kind of ground you in what to expect and, and what the agenda will be like and, and how to find sessions and all of that great stuff. So you'll have that support. Um, there'll be a number of you know scientific sessions that'll be fun to attend. There'll be space for you to attend um, scientific sessions that sound interesting to you um, as well as networking opportunities. Um, yeah, so there'll be plenty more to come on that, but um, definitely lots of exciting opportunities, including the poster sessions. 
Love it. Thank you so much, Raya. So as we conclude, drop those ones in the chat. If I will see your application drop on Fern, drop those ones in the chat. Um, really looking forward to seeing you all work and um, all the fulfilling things you do at AmeriCorps. It is not taken for granted. It's not taken lightly. Um, the public health field in itself needs people like you, um, like you to do the work that we do. And so really appreciate all of your time with the webinars and attendance. Um, we will be looking forward to engaging with you all during office hours. And like I said, a really informal way to connect and help you through the abstract submission process. So if there are no more questions and my team of experts has nothing more to add, um, I do want to thank you all for attending today. And um, this, this is recorded and will be released to you all to be able to watch again um, and have that as a reference for your work. Thank you so, so, so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to stay back or throw things in the chat. Um, I'll be around, but we do appreciate your attendance and hope to see you in Atlanta. I'm here and I'm waiting for you. So excited. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. That was really helpful. Oops.